In the previous video, we created this pattern by bisecting each side. But what if we, say, trisect each side? We can get a very similar pattern. So we trisect the line by cutting it into three equal parts, and then cutting each of those into three equal parts, etc. We see that each level is made up of three one-third size copies of the previous level. We can trisect the square, and for each level we get nine one-ninth size copies of the previous level. And we can trisect the cube, that is by cutting each side into three equal parts. And in the, for the cube, each level is made up of 27 one twenty-seventh sized copies of the previous level. I think you can see the general pattern. So in general, instead of bisecting or trisecting, we can msect. We can divide each side into m equal size parts. So now at dimension 1, each level is made up of m 1 over m size copies. At dimension 2, we get each level being made of m squared 1 over m squared size copies. And similarly, at dimension 3, we get m cubed 1 over m cubed size copies. And we can keep going. And finally, we can write down a general statement that looks like this. For dimension d, each level is made up of m raised to the d power number of 1 over m raised to the d power sized copies of the previous level. That's our definition of dimension. That's a perfectly good definition of dimension. OK, well, I hope this isn't getting too abstract for you. But now we can use all this to create a mathematical definition of dimension. But one warning, uh, the next part contains a little bit of math. In particular, it contains some logarithms. So if you're not as comfortable with logarithms as maybe you once were, or if you want some review, you can watch the next video, which is a short review of logarithms. Otherwise, if you feel very comfortable with logarithms, you can skip to the video after that.